I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant. Hello hi. there, hi. Good hi. to talk to you. Uh, Carl Pilkington is over there. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Keeps it real. <laughs> yeah. Respect, Carl. Oh. Rick, um, I just think, you know, we want to lift off the show straight away. Yeah. Into the, uh, stratosphere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah. the best way to do that, it seemed to me, was to resurrect a game we used to play when we first began the show in old XFM days. Do you oh, remember the yeah. game, do you remember the game Make rub, Ricky rub, Gervais Rub me laugh? hard. Rub you hard? No, no. No, so no. What, what, what that was only in the pilot. We never <laughs> actually did that on live Okay, right. Um, no, it was the game Make Ricky Gervais Laugh. Oh, I remember, and we yeah. used to get people, uh, Carl, you probably didn't hear it, we used to get people to sort of send in pictures and, uh, jokes and stuff, and if I could make Ricky laugh on air with those- He won a toffee. Things, then they won a gift of some kind. Yeah. Anyway, um, a lot of, a lot of emails actually saying people love your laugh, Rick. So I was, in a sense, we're giving they, the public what they want. They must be taking the mickey. But this is a picture I found in today's copy of The Sun, so if, if, uh, you're listening at home and you want to know what the picture looks like, rush out and buy a copy, only 40p. Yeah. And, uh, it Are we sponsored by the sun? <laughs> we do white van, man. Exactly. <laughs> it amused me straight away this, because bear in mind, right. it is one of the world's biggest rock stars. Okay. Just check out the face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, that's fantastic. Look at that. Oh, uh, that is Michael Stipe. Oh, dear, we're sort of like, we're looking like, I don't know, some sort of Nazi officer. That's <laughs> not libelous. That's not libelous. Mike, you, in your opinion, Michael Stein, yeah. he's outside there during the press conference yeah. for Peter Buck's It's quickly. not a good picture. I love, I think, I love R.E.M. I and mean, I love Michael Stein. I think he's a lovely man, but that's a bad picture, isn't it? He's <laughs> got <laughs> big glasses on and <laughs> yeah. stubble, obviously, he's got He doesn't appear to be looking at anything. He's <laughs> looking right <laughs> beyond oh, like, everyone else. Can yeah. you see that, Carl? <laughs> I'll tell you who he looks like. He looks like Zig, I think, from Zig and Zag. <laughs> It looks like well, he's a muppet go. made of foam. Oh, love anyway, it. Nice the, to see that game the, come back. Yeah, the, the, the medium success. of radio. <laughs> yeah. Do you speak much French, Rick? I speak un peu. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I can ask, where is the Tourist Information Bureau? And, um, uh, I like, I can express my preference in music tastes, yeah. and I can order an Orangina, and that's all I can do. I, I know un bien, blonde. Pression, I think. That means, um, draft, your friend. To <laughs> <laughs> to Emily Music Folk? Oh. That's filthy. So <laughs> what that means, Carl? No, go on. Really dirty. <laughs> really dirty. To Emily Music Folk? Yeah, you dirty. <laughs> you, <laughs> you, f you filthy little f uh, Frenchy. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Um, do you know, do you, want, do you know much French, Carl? Um, have you got any fromage? <laughs> 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 That'd work. That's cheese fine. fish. <laughs> it's, it's cheese fish. fish. It's cheese. Would you not care which one you were given? You like both. I it's think, the, I think that's a whole you... different kettle of poisson. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just think when you're in, in a country, you should have a, have a little go. <laughs> it, well, well, that's a very little go. Yeah. You, you mean like football hooligans have a little go? What do you mean? <laughs> you know, try and have a, have a go at their, uh, yeah. their language. And well, what I do is I go in there and I point and talk a bit louder than usual in perfect English. <laughs> and if they don't get it, I go mental. <laughs> exactly. Securing the fact that I've tried my best and now I'm in a laugh. <laughs> and or that is, the, that is the, the prerogative of all Englishmen. Or just yeah. point. Point and shout. Yeah, yeah, point and shout. Don't yeah. forget, you, you know, because you can never be foreign if you're English anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. No, they're speaking funny. Just remember that. Yeah? Yeah. God save us! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go on then. You were gonna say something else. Yeah, um, that picture you were showing me. Yeah. Uh, I wish we could post one on the website of Carl. Can remember we won that, we won an award ages ago, our, what was it called? The British Radio Authority Award. Yeah. And, um, we made Carl get in the picture, and he was a bit reticent, a bit, it, it came out but, his head, his perfectly circular. <laughs> I put a coin on it and it- and only the ears popped out from behind the coin. <laughs> isn't it perfectly round, well, isn't I it? I mean, w when you've been saying I've, I've got a round head, I was a bit like, yeah, everyone has, stop having a go. Yeah. And then I saw this picture last week, I thought, God, he's right. Can we get- uh, can we- ca can't we just pop it on the XOM website? I'd rather not. I'll go on- Steve, get someone. have you seen that- that man in a jar without a brain? <coughs> Sorry, you have, to, you have to, is that something, is that a product you can buy? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, same uh, risk? Is it a dream you had yesterday? Not you wondered if you could, can I, uh, yes, hello, um, could you make my dream into <laughs> reality, <laughs> please? <laughs> oh, we can't actually, sir. <laughs> In, uh, plastic would be good. <laughs> Sorry, what, what do you mean? In the future, you'd be able to download your dreams and then just, like, act them out again, probably, in the year 2000 or something. Mm. <laughs> Soothsayer. No, there's some museum somewhere. Yeah. That's got this little fella who was born without a brain and he's in a jar, and it's just that like he's got a really round head. Right. And when I saw this picture, I thought, God, it, it, it just reminded me of this little fella yeah. in a jar. Oh, and what <laughs> do you mean he's born without a brain? 
It was born without a brain. So it's a baby. Uh, it's not a little feather. <laughs> yeah, but it's weird. Do you know the difference? Do you, do you have conversations with like people in prams thinking that fella's little and he doesn't talk much? Yeah. You know babies aren't like little people. Well, maybe. Well, they are little people, but I mean they're not they're not very small adults. They're not like midgets. They don't do a job of work, is what we're yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. You very there. Yeah. What do you mean? I didn't read about it. I just saw the picture. And this is where you're going mind. wrong, Carl. This is the, always your mistake. You see the picture, you don't read the little cat. But what do you mean? How do you, you think guess at what you think the meaning? But is. how did you know he didn't have a brain? He said something like the brainless man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but most people say that about you. It doesn't mean you literally you haven't no, got no, a spinal. I, I, I bet somebody's seen it and, and knows what I mean. It's a famous picture. Right, like... call in. Uh, you win a prize if you can tell us what Carl is talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Just in general, it's an ongoing competition. <laughs> We're trying to find some CDs to anyone who knows what Carl is talking about. <laughs> mm. Well, we've had calls confirming that there was indeed. Um, a fetus or or a stillborn child, a pickled born, baby, a pickled baby. No wonder it died. Uh, born without a brain. Um, but everyone has, um, you know, pointed out that it wasn't a little fella. <laughs> it certainly wasn't a little fella. <laughs> no, no. But because it had been in the jar for a long time, I think it had aged a bit. <laughs> what are you basing that on? You do carry on growing, yeah, yeah. yeah. With your ears and your nose. Your ears and your nose, and your eyes don't grow, so, uh, yeah. you could probably, uh, yeah. I'll dig it out for you. <laughs> yeah. Imagine if, if, like, there was an experiment where they were raising a child just based on the information that we said on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. kind of a person it was like would download, they be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what it kind just, of information would they and have? And it took everything literally. Exactly. And I think, yeah, there was no, there's no irony or, uh, yeah, it was just. They just, everything we said they assumed was fact. Everything and, and, that Carl said. And they any question, was fact. any question it had about the world, it could only ask Carl. Exactly. And it was. See, now, his... this worries me because without wishing to be disrespectful in any way, Carl, you know I think you're the best man on earth. When you have a child, we could be in a situation a bit like that. Do you know, is it a concern for you, do you think, that, like, when your son's growing up, or your daughter, and they're asking you questions, you're conscious, I mean, you yourself have admitted that yeah, you, have a, you have a sphere of knowledge which you are an expert on. Ask your mother. You say, ask your mother. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> That's great, fair enough. That's good. And I'd play with it. I think I'd be a good dad. Yeah, sure. I think you would. But I wouldn't be the one who's shouting at it. No. No. I who would you get to shout at? Yeah. But I mean, Windsor Davis. <laughs> He'd be good, wouldn't he? You are a little man! Well, you know, I'd tell it the rights and wrong. You don't have to be a really bright person to know the rights and wrong in the world. Yeah. No. I think you are bright, Carl. You are. And at what point in their, um, in their life would you tell them about the evolution of the baguette? <laughs> <laughs> Which you told us. Or the story of the bee. Yes. That you sco <laughs> scored once. Or the two you? children. Would you ever get them to meet as <laughs> yeah. maybe like that? They could be godparents. The, uh, the, the, the friends you had at school. Yeah. With the, 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 the baguette. <laughs> Heads and weird heads. Dads they weren't friends. That weren't friends. Oh, I wish we could track them down. Oh, that'd be great. I imagine they're in a zoo. <laughs> 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 oh, wow. Oh, yeah. two big That's jars. Yeah. Two big jars. Industrial strength jars. Oh, dear. Man. Guess what? Go on. Um, this is one of our last shows. We're going away, I'm afraid, on the, um, 4th of May, isn't it? I can't remember. That's our last show, the 4th of May. Um, yeah, not forever. I, I brought a downer on the whole thing then, yeah. didn't I? There's people cheering. Well, guess who's taking over from us? And I found this out. I was watching Liquid News the other night. Right. No one had called me. Zoe Ball. Well, she's a good presenter, but is, is this confirmed? I don't know. Should I have said that? Is this true? Uh, yeah, I think so. Oh, well, yeah, you've done it now. <laughs> yeah. she, she was in the other day, you watched it on the telly, so... Yeah. But what annoys me is, this is rather like when we got, according to last week's uh, Media Guardian, we got wrapped for, uh, saying the word cock on the radio, and, um, oh. what we never did, did we? That was, we had to read that on the internet, we yeah. no never told that, us. That, that just slipped out of your mouth, didn't it? What's that, cock? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so anyway. And, um, now we don't even get told face to face that Zoe Ball's gonna take over. Yeah, but it was only, like, sorted out the other day, and then I, when I saw you We're allowed to say Ball, aren't we? Yeah. When I saw right. you yesterday, I said, yeah, it's- So we're not allowed to say- Oh. Uh, no, no. I'm not gonna say the word, and we're not gonna say- the, we're, we're not allowed to say the- we are allowed to say the male bird is a cock, we're not allowed to say the other yeah. one, but we are allowed to say Ball. Yeah. What if her and her dad, Bobby, uh, would they be- would we be allowed to say a pair of balls? We'll be able to say that, and I don't know. I don't I think he's part of the deal. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't need to. In fact, if if she's listening, call in and confirm it. We'd let her on the air, won't we? As long as she doesn't swear. Yeah, don't be rude. Yeah, don't be rude, Zoe. Blue. Yeah. <laughs> don't be cheap, basically. Better warn as well not to leave too much nothing lying around, because it'll be gone. <laughs> Especially if it's scag. Yeah, yeah, but can you just say it's not, not forever? Isn't it? 
No, I, think she'll, stand... I think she'll become more popular than us. And I, th- I, think, no, I, think, I think that'll be the end of us, to be honest. Well, I think she can they're... string a sentence together. I think she'll get lots of PR and everything. And she goes out with Big Boy Slim. Big Boy Slim. Who's, uh, you know... A good DJ. He's a good DJ. And, uh... Is her name Zoe Slim now? Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, there will be nothing. It's three months in it, she's taken over for. Is she getting paid the same as us? I don't know. We'll find out. I bet it's a hell of a lot more. I'll go mental. <laughs> I bet it's good money. It's good work. <laughs> I'll, I'll go mental. Yeah, well. <laughs> well, there you go. What are you gonna do? I'm, uh... For three months. I, I'm gonna have Saturdays off. What Is she... Are, are, are you gonna present with her? Are you gonna come on and press the buttons? He's not allowed. No, I don't... I hope not. Cause, he's you know, you're our... Yeah. Ripping boy, um, <laughs> co-presenter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're like our little fella in a jar. Yeah. We're, it's in like fact, that's what like we should do with you over <laughs> those, uh, three months. <laughs> Keep you in a jar and we can have it wi- in alternate weeks. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, like step-parents or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be great, wouldn't it? Brilliant. Just, you can oh, do it. Oh, me and Steve are fighting for custody. Yeah. It'll be a big jar, though. You can, mm. you can put stuff in there. You can, oh, you can have, it won't be, oh, it won't be, like, um, full of water or, or vinegar or whatever they do. Or you won't become pickled car. No. Um, it'd be, it'd be like an air, big air chamber and you're sat, sat there and it'd be like a little, what would he be in? An armchair or something? It'd be in an armchair and we'd, and we'd have stuff in there and we'd bring your girlfriend, like, once a week and she'd go, mm. and we'd put a blanket over the top so we wouldn't, you know, see anything. But like the Big Brother household. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. That, that's a hell of a documentary. Oh, that'd be amazing, wouldn't Carl it? Carl in a jar. But anyway, that's <laughs> what, so we're going away on the 4th of May for 12 weeks. It's a long time, isn't we it? We were doing the second series of The Office, so we can't be around, I'm afraid. And, and, uh, Zoe Ball standing in for us. And, uh, That can't be right. She's not, st- I don't think you can say standing in for us. Isn't that right? Taking over the show, I think, would be fair to say. I don't know. I, got, I can't say anything now, can you? I'm don't worried about that. that. Just because he goes up with Big Boy Slim, mm. you've got to be careful what you say. Yeah. Uh, oh, you look upset. He's starting to think that we're getting melancholy now, that you're just gonna sit at home. What are you gonna do every Saturday? Dunno. Go shopping. Let's sort out a jar. We've gotta do the balloons before then as well. You've gotta send you up in a balloon. Maybe you can send you up in a balloon and you come straight down into a big jar. Yeah. And they put a, <laughs> like, a giant cork in straight away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and there's a big jar. I'll tell you what we could do. We could set you adrift like Robinson Crusoe <laughs> set the bottle and see where <laughs> you end you, up. If you find me, yeah. Oh, you might go to an uninhabited island or something. I'll tell you something that I learned in the week. Go on. Just reminded me there about going up in the air. Go on. Right. If cars could drive up, it only took an hour to get into space. Which is great. Going how fast? Uh, about 50 miles an hour. <laughs> you just made that up, didn't you? <laughs> you just plucked, you just guessed that. You just guessed it. You just said about 50. Yeah, See, this is what worries me. If you have a, if you have a son or a daughter, yeah, age fi- fifty, he's yeah. gonna be out in the street with a ramp pointing Dad, into the sky. Dad, how long does elephants live? About a thousand years, <laughs> a thousand or something. I want to say. Dad, uh, how much can an ant lift? About a quarter of a quarter of a kilogram, probably. <laughs> About two bags of sugar. If you guess, it's not fact. Yeah, if just because you thought it, that doesn't make it fact. Does anyone know how long it'll take a car going 50 Let's miles not an hour? Let's People are not phoning in about anything space. now, Rick. Yeah. <laughs> we yeah. asked them to phone in about the jar thing. <laughs> <laughs> Switchboard lit up. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> you, you asked them to phone in about, like, you <laughs> know, something sensible, yeah. like Che Guevara or, yeah. you know, the life of I Mr. Know the fact that There's that, nothing. That is really a demographic sort of snapshot <laughs> of <laughs> our <laughs> fans. Our audience. Ask them about <laughs> a dead baby without a brain. Oh, yeah. And they're reaching for the their phones. They don't mind what their bill is that much. We ask them for, you know, I don't know, great quotes or something. Yeah. The great philosophers, nothing. They just ask him where phone. to buy, yeah, meths. <laughs> Straight on the phone. Oh, do you know the the quotes that Ricky gave me last week and I turned them down? Yeah. I got home. Girlfriend had a go at me. They don't know you turned him down. What you know is that he said he didn't oh, want right. to take the book at the end of the show. So I'm not taking it. It's too difficult. I'm gonna go and get a nice one and go on. Come yeah. On. So I went home and uh, Suzanne said, "Where's the book?" She was really looking forward to having a look at it. I said, oh, I gave it him back, I wasn't up for that. And yet, last week I was ill and stuff, I wasn't in the mood for learning. Yeah. So I'm not having it. She goes, this is where you went wrong at school. Oh. She said, this is exactly where you went, went wrong. She said, you know, you liked infants, you liked, uh, you know, your colouring in and your painting stuff. She said, but as soon as it gets to the heavy stuff, you just, you know, you're like a horse with its blinkers on. Yeah. So you just shut yourself away. So I said, no, I, I just, I could have done if I wanted to. So anyway, um, we went and bought a quotations book, so I have got some quotes. This yeah, what's the you. quotation book you bought? So I was asking him to, uh, read Keats and Wilde, Wordsworth, Shakespeare. Uh, what did you buy? It's, it's quotes with, like, Eric and Ernie and that in it. 
<laughs> no, but there's still quotes. <laughs> there's still quotes. The yeah. Sesame Street book of quotes. <laughs> Brilliant. That's no, that's they're still valid. No, it's a starting point. Oh. It's a starting point. Heat magazine say you're a genius. You've got your picture in that extracts magazine with a little round head. You have Jaffa cakes. I gave him a fiver the other week to buy biscuits. He's having the time of his life. Yeah. This is the best day. This must be your best two hours of the week. So, I enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> what's what's better regular than this for you? What's a better two hours a week? Uh, Sleep doesn't count. Um. Actually, you're probably right, it might be this. Yeah? Yeah. Or, um, that 24 thing's good. Oh, right, like right. Probably worth sorry. mentioning Suzanne. Yeah, your girlfriend. Your girlfriend. Yeah, well that goes without saying, doesn't oh, it? Oh, he's done I mean? it, he's oh, pulled right. it round. If he's could... pulled it round, he's a charmer. If she could <laughs> come in and sit in the corner, then yeah, it would be the best time ever. That's pretty sweet, actually. Oh. And she's not even in London at the moment. Oh, we'll say what you want then. have to say that. Yeah. You have to say it, and you did anyway. Yeah. That's she lovely. Might, she might be listening to <laughs> 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 yeah, it's quite digital. It? It's always that. It's always, <laughs> always <laughs> that danger. Really, yeah. <laughs> anyway, Steve, over well, to I, you. Um, I just was wondering because I, obviously I, I've had an exciting week, relatively speaking, Rick. Because yeah. uh, instead of just spending it all with you, yeah. sat in a little room, yeah. um, <laughs> as is our way, yeah. I've been doing some acting this week. As you I know. know. I know. And uh, I don't normally act, uh, but I, um, basically uh, there's some people at the BBC who are making a, a comedy pilot, kind of comedy TV show, and, uh, you know, and I auditioned for it, and the role was uh, to play a sort of freaky looking, sort of lanky geek, you know, and I don't want to say- be How did you beat off I don't want to say an arrogant Rick, but they gave me the job on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it was like, you know, I mean, obviously I'm, you know, because I'm not a bad actor, I'm not as good as Rick, but I'm, you know, I'm, what, I'm, is it, I'm, what is it? What is it? It's a, it's a, I play a really tall guy, like a sort of. That's six the part. Foot seven. That's the part, though, isn't it? About you've got. A beard. I'm a character who's um, six or seven inches tall, and I'm trying to win the world's uh, tallest man. That's it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, there's always a man that beats me every year because he's slightly taller. But this year, I think for some reason, because I've been training, I can beat him. That's the and, um Sally Phillips, I don't know if you know Sally Phillips, she, she's a very good, uh, comedy writer and actress and she's written it. So it was good fun and so we went down there and it was good and everything. It was, you know, a little trailer and everything. It was like the proper deal. It was really good. And, um, the problem was yesterday I had to dance. One of the sequences had me dancing. Now, as you know, I think I'm a pretty groovy dancer. I'm yeah. a pretty, I'm a bit of a mover. Yeah. And I have to tell you this, Rick. Do you have anyone's eye out with your elbow? <laughs> I have come to some serious realizations about my dancing. Really? I was moving around like a shire horse dancing. Really? It was terrible. I was just like quick and they, they say this choreographer trying to show me some moves and it was just he was, he was just like crying by the end yeah, of it. It was they, they really were, they were, <laughs> yeah. It was so bad. But the worst thing about it is today my whole body is ravaged with pain and agony. It's I'm utterly devastated by the, the agony of it. Trying to get down the stairs this morning, I swear to God, I look like Thor Heard. <laughs> Trying to hobble that, it was mad. I was like, I'd had several hip replacements. I was like, I had to go down at an angle, going down the stairs. It was ludicrous, and I was really worried. Suddenly, I'm thinking because I thought I was pretty fit and pretty sure. groovy and everything, mm. and I had been discussing with um, this mate of mine, my housemate, that we should maybe do start doing some exercise because mm. I'm putting on a little bit of weight. Right, he's quite a thin, tall guy. He has a belly. I don't know how to summarise it. Have you ever seen the film Junior with Arnold Schwarzenegger? Yeah, it looks like that. Really? It's like a grotesque. So the two of us, were, so we suggested, we decided that we were going to do some exercise together, right? This is what we're going to do. We, each morning we were going to get up, we were going to exercise together. That won't happen. Right. Well, no, but wait, Rick. You see, you're wrong because a couple of days ago I said to him, listen, what we should do is get one of those, like, health videos, you know, those kind of training videos, what they're called, like, um, I don't know, they might have an aerobics thing or a yeah. sort of hour long workout. And I said to him, get one of the ones that's hosted by, like, um, Pauline Quirk. Oh. Elle McPherson or Cindy Crawford, you know, you know, someone like that, someone sexy, right? So, uh, I swear to God, we went down this morning, we put it on, right? Just want you to picture this scene, right? It's me and my mate in our shorts, right? Nine o'clock in the morning, working out- You didn't actually do it. To Helen from Big Brother's <laughs> video, right? That was- it was the cheapest one, Steve, you told me. <laughs> Thanks very much, mate. We saw that advertised as yeah. well. Working out, right? And the two of us in our shorts, she's there, like, the, you know, she's the closest there is to a living Homer Simpson, right, shouting out and stuff. I just wanted to be reassured, Rick. There's nothing gay about that, is there? Um... There's nothing a touch kind of fruity about that image. No. I mean, I th the ones you'd avoid would be sort of Liza Minnelli, Roy right, Cal. Cher. Um, uh, Graham Norton, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Um... Dale Winton. Gay Byrne. Right, sure. He's not gay. No. But, I mean, the name's a little yeah. bit gay, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, So, yeah. I think, I, I think, Helen, for me, brother, you're probably safe. Mm -hmm. Um, 
Who else? Who else? I don't know what, what else to tell you, really. Um... But, I mean, because I know you've got a personal trainer. I'm obviously not in that kind of state, this kind of states at the moment. I don't have that kind of cash. No. But, um, you know, I'm obviously quite excited. What have I got to look forward to? Do, do I go through a my, 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 uh, my trainer, Pink Eric, we call him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, I, um, I sort of box a little bit. But what I'm saying is, do you go through a pain barrier? What, cause no, 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 I stop way before that. <laughs> right. And okay. I sit down and have a beer. Right. You don't, there's no, there's no point in going <laughs> through pain because it just put you off. Sure. So, um, if, if, if you, you know, start feeling any sort of pain or, or any, um, breathlessness or any aches, <laughs> yeah. sit down immediately. <laughs> now, is it right that he's worked out a special routine for you where you don't have to get up? Yeah, well, he actually said, I remember the first, was, uh, I got my food diary and he was looking at it. And I could see he was, he, he sort of feared it. He feared taking on this challenge. And it's a true quote. At one point, uh, he, he said, right, um, okay, cut cheese down to five times a week then. I must have haggled from four. <laughs> cheese down to five times a week. <laughs> and it, it's sort of like, I'm my own worst enemy. Because if I cut out cheese and beer, I would just lose weight. Like, it would drop off me in a month. So what I'm doing, I'm, I'm just, I'm fighting it all the time. I'm, yeah. I haven't changed my sort of eating and drinking habits, but I now work out three times a week. And it's an uphill struggle, Steve. Yeah, of course, of course. It's just, so uh, you're just keeping it an even keel. I know, well, I, I, yeah. So I can live longer to eat more cheese and beer. Do you exercise, Carl? Do you do any exercise whatsoever? I, I used to go to a gym in town, but it wasn't the sort of, the hard work of doing the, you know, the stuff. It was just that like, it was like 60 quid a month. Yeah. I thought, well, <laughs> crazy, know, isn't it? That's not good. So I just got out of my way to sort of walk everywhere. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Instead of jumping on a bus, like a nice day like today, walking to work, or, uh, you know, run up the stairs. You're <laughs> skinny, though. <laughs> you run up the stairs. What? You're really skinny, though. No, but I, I do eat a lot of, like, crappy food. So yeah. I reckon, I mean, what did they say? When you get to 30, it all just. You go mental, don't you? Yeah, you know they say I mean? that. Play record. That's the, who's, uh, that's the philosophers, no, isn't no, it? When you get to thirty, you go mental. No, oh, Descartes. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I yeah. Know. Um, but uh, I was just obviously I was talking about this little bit of acting I was doing yesterday, and uh, not wishing to be disrespectful to anyone that was involved, but there was um, obviously some extras or supporting artists, as I believe they know, and you know, all good, good, lovely people, really putting the effort in, doing good work and everything. But there's this one guy I stood next to, and you know, he's quite a tall guy, uh, not quite as tall as me, but tall guy, you know, quite a good-looking bloke, or whatever. And uh, I just sat there, and he, he obviously gets quite boring because there's a lot of just hanging around, and people waiting and stuff, fixing lights. I just stood next to him, and he just went, "Oh," he was looking for something to say to me, obviously, and he went, "Looking forward to the new Guns N' Roses album." <laughs> <laughs> and I went, I didn't realise there was one on the way, actually. He went, yeah, yeah, obviously they, uh, it, uh Slash won't be in it, because obviously Slash is no longer with them, but, uh, <laughs> bloody a sweet child of mine. One of my, one of my favourites. Just started singing some of the songs. <laughs> I went, oh, okay, great. Without went, yeah. irony, I Absolutely assume. without irony. He was just wanting to get onto a discussion of Guns N' Roses, but I'll tell you this, he did not look like a rocker in any way. He looked like a bloke who would work in, sort of, an accountancy, Barclays. uh, agency. Uh, yeah, or Barclays, yeah, behind the counter, something like yeah. that. Very well scrubbed, well groomed. I was saying, there's yeah. nothing wrong with Barclays or the people who work therein. <laughs> That's true, though. Okay. So he goes, yeah, I mean, I, I got into them with uh, Appetite for Destruction, the classic first album, um, but I even, you know, I enjoyed the spaghetti incident as well. I mean, I like all of them. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, right, okay. And he goes, I said, um, uh, I said to him, have you ever seen them live or anything? He went, I have not seen them live, no, but I was lucky enough to be at Donington, Monsters of Rock, <laughs> and, uh, Slash's Snake Pit was playing, <laughs> which was Slash's solo effort. Yeah, yeah. And he went, I've never been, I've never been to, uh, uh, those live gigs before, and, uh, I was down in the mosh pit. Oh, man, alive, I was down there, and I'll tell you this, have you been in the mosh pit? I went, I'm not, he goes, oh, it's crazy down there, it's wild. A guy threw a punch at me, I punched him, knocked him straight out, he knocked me out, someone's this fight went off, oh, it was amazing, it was amazing, amazing. I went, are you gonna go back? He went, no, I won't, because once you've done something like that, you can never repeat the, um, the experience. You know, I mean, I was, they, everyone there was dressed in black. I think I was the only guy wearing a white t-shirt. <laughs> I was like, okay, I could just imagine him tucked in as well. That's, why, that's why I attacked him. Exactly. It's like ants. <laughs> yeah. They, they Slash thought himself. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a termite in the nest. Exactly. And they just turned on him. But so the venue, so I'm going, okay, so, so, do you go to gigs often? He went, no, I don't think I'm ever gonna go to another rock gig. And I said to him, why? And he went, I don't think any gig I go to will be able to top the experience of seeing UB40 live. <laughs> And I, do you know what I mean? And I oh, almost no, but, did what you well, did. Well, that's why I've never seen him live, because I don't want to end my life. But I almost laughed. No point I then. thought it was a joke. I thought he was making a joke, and I was about to laugh, and I realised he was deadly serious, and I went, You be I went, 40. Oh, good were they? He went, absolutely blinding. Uh, one of the sure. most incredible live experiences I've ever seen. I imagine. Um, did remarkable. they do songs in a sort of mock reggae style? Apparently for they two did. hours. And then he Excellent. began to tell me which, which of his favourite, he went, I, I don't know if, I said, have they done anything recently? Have they put anything out? He went, I don't think they're gonna be able to top, um, those classic albums, Bag of Rhythm, 
and yeah. right in the kitchen. I remember once when I went to sign on, okay, and it, I don't know what year it was, must have been like 1979 or something, and, uh, my foot, I left school, and, uh, um, uh, tell me if I'm wrong if it wasn't out then, but this bloke was at the back with sort of like a ghetto blaster and he was playing one in ten. <laughs> right. Obviously making a point, he was in the dole office. <laughs> yeah. Everyone ignored him <laughs> and when it finished playing he turned it down. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, he took, wow. it, took a number and queued. The days when they were a protest. Bank. When was that? What year was that? What year oh, did I? I uh, someone can pinpoint that for me. Phone in. I know it had just come out. But um, but what was amazing is when he said that about you before him being the best low experience you've ever seen. I th it was one of those moments where you thought I never thought I'd hear someone say that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I don't know why that. I can't understand what kind of person you are. I suddenly realised at that moment there was such a chasm between us. Is there anyone out there whose favourite band is UB40? <laughs> Red, red wine, 40. maybe. You be you be you be forty, yeah. Oh, they're, anyway, they're a great God bunch of blokes. You. though. you see them? They 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 crack me up when I see them interviewed. They're really funny. But um, once you've heard one, that's pretty much it, yeah. isn't it? Absolutely. I imagine. I mean, I don't know. Maybe yeah. I'm a Philistine. Maybe there's some hidden depths to them that we don't understand. Uh, Maybe some great tracks that you could yeah. play if you're a big fan. Uh, well, I'm never going to go and see him because wh <laughs> why? No, no. Why sort of like top your experiences? Exactly. You no, know? because you never get a bit better. It when when I know I'm definitely dying. Yeah. I'm going to go. You'll summon them get to me play for you. Yeah. Get me, give me, do, get me labour of love live. Do, do right in the kitchen <laughs> now. <laughs> Now, again, I broke the rules in the week. I met up with Carl. Oh, I had lunch with him, and uh, we were chatting and having a having a cup of tea. And it got onto one of Carl's favourite programmes was the Tales of the Unexpected. Ah, oh, of course. And all I can think is that he's probably the only person in Britain where they were unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to him, when that that twist came in, he go. Gee, I can't. Yeah. Oh God. I can't believe. So it was the tree that did it. <laughs> and I mean, he was probably the only. And, I, and we were telling all these stories of horror, and he liked horror stories. And I, and I told him this story. Um, uh, and I don't know if this had come across in the radio, but I told him this story. Um, it was a, it was a short. It was a horror short. This was a, s a film you saw, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. And um, what it was, it started off just had been a car crash. You see, it's a horrendous wreck, and you saw it from the point of view of the person in the car, and he was calling for his mate, and he was going, Dave. And he sort of he, he sort of looked over and saw a body without a head that had been thrown. At. He goes, "Oh no, Dave, Dave!" And then into the field of view came Dave, his mate, and looked at him with a look of horror. And then it sort of went black, and you realised that he was just a head, and it had been his body. Oh wow! Right? Yeah. And I said, then, then it came up at the end um, uh, at the uh, uh, executions in the French Revolution. Um, people experienced consciousness for you know, and he went, he went, oh. No, he said, you wouldn't, it wouldn't be for that long. And then he went, if it was a chicken it would work. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine remaking <laughs> that film, but it's two <laughs> chickens <laughs> in horrendous car crash. <laughs> <laughs> Their would, own fault for driving me. <laughs> 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 it would work. No. No, he wasn't having that. Yeah. No, it was too long. I think he said, how long was this film? Went, oh, no, five minutes. He went, no. <laughs> it would work if it was a chicken. I like the way that Carly and something like when you t relate an incident like that, he's appalled and offended and annoyed by the people that made it, even though he's yeah. never seen oh, it. Oh, he's he's, get, he, he's annoyed. Yeah, like I you. Have it. I want to see it. I think it's a good idea. Yeah, but they should have thought it through a bit more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you have a favourite uh, tells the unexpected one that you remember particularly that shook you up? Yeah, we were talking about the one on um, where uh, there's some woman in prison. Have you seen that one? No, I can't remember them all. Right, this woman's in prison. Yeah. And, uh, she gets a bit friendly with the guy who takes the dead bodies out. Right. And, uh, he says, I can get you out of here. He said, what you've got to do, right? You've got to, uh, I don't know, at midnight. When you, well, when you hear the bell toll, yeah, that means there's a, been a, yeah, a uh, dead body. Yeah, yeah, there's been a dead body. So what you've got to do is go into, like, the, uh, place where all the dead bodies are, get on the, get in the first coffin on the right, and then I'll come along and carry you out and you can run away and escape. Yeah. Right? So she goes, yeah, all right then. So she hears the bell go. I'll, no, I'll, I'll, I'll bury you, right, and then I'll come, I'll come back later and dig you up. Right. Yeah, but that's I, the that point. It doesn't matter. It does matter. Trust me, Carl. All it right, really then, matters. Okay. Listen, yeah. I, I right. don't know if I'm going to ruin this for people at home. Yeah. Can I just skip to the f end? I would imagine that she gets buried and he doesn't come back, and she has to get no, buried alive. Be better than yeah. that. Okay. Yeah, she, right. she, she does it. She gets into the coffin. Yes. Yeah, go on. Right. So she gets in the coffin. 
And uh, she's lying there for ages. She's buried. She can feel a bit of movement going on, so she's obviously, you know, being carried somewhere, so she's thinking this is it, I'm getting out. And uh, yeah, she's lying there for ages and thinking, why isn't someone coming and lifting the lid off this? Do you know what I mean? Letting me get out. So she's really bored. She gets a lighter out, right? Lights it to have a look at who she's lying on. It's only the fella who said she'd he'd help escape. Oh. How bad is that? That is- <laughs> How bad is that? <laughs> So it is quite important that she's buried alive then, isn't it? In retrospect, you realise that the jeopardy is that she's buried alive and yeah. can't get out. Yeah. 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 It makes it so much worse, doesn't it, than just like lying in the morgue and going, actually I'm getting out of here. Yeah. This isn't gonna work. Look at Carl's face, having told yeah. that, he's so pleased, his face is lit up, he's beaming like yeah. a child. Is Have that, you seen any? Is that your favourite horror thing ever? That- that's a good one. And um- Let's see if anyone knows what the finger is. When that bloke oh, was under yeah. the ground, wiggling we're, his finger. We're talking about one with, uh, some fella who's stuck in the ground or something. <laughs> There's a- this is a motif I noticed in the, your particular <laughs> favourite ones. <laughs> yeah. Right? People no. stuck in the ground. Go yeah, on. right, so she's- she- It's oh, a fella, is it? Yeah, it's- yeah, a fella stuck. Now, I seem to remember it just being his foot, to be honest, being stuck in a hole. And no, he was under the ground and he had a, he got a little thing out of the pavement and he put his finger up and wiggled it to try and attract attention. Then you see a woman come along and her stiletto heel just knocks his finger off. You see, I'm wondering whether it's the same one as I saw. Yeah, it could be two like that, couldn't there? <laughs> it's a, it's, it's a, they were running it's, out of ideas by the last series. A, it's a big theme in Hollywood. <laughs> or, um, what was that one you told me about with the, uh, with the porn? That was a good one. Oh, this was fantastic, right? <laughs> right. There was this, there was this, uh, Sorry, can I just check now? We're just remembering classic episodes of the Tales of No, the this, is, now, this is, this is, this is important. Well, I saw <laughs> one, right? I saw one, um, on Tales of Inspector, right? And it was, um, uh, this- these two gents, um, uh, what they used to do, they look- look down the obituaries and they'd blackmail, um, the- the wife or the son of a- a dead eminent person, like might be a priest or a doctor or something like, and they'd go and they'd say, he bought some, um, erotic, uh, um, stuff from us, um, before he died and he owes, uh, a hundred guineas and all this sort of stuff and, uh, and they'd pay up because it'd be so embarrassing, they just didn't want them to say, just pay him, yeah. right? And this one bloke said, um, who are these people? I'll meet with them. And he goes round there, and he goes round, and, uh, they go, your father, he goes, my father could not have bought any erotic material from you. And they did it, he goes, he couldn't have, he's blind. <laughs> right, and that was the twist. And Carl went, so it was magazines, not videos then. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> now think about it, Steve. Is that so stupid? Well, presumably it was set in olden times because yeah. people- I mean, oh, Professional right. pornographers don't tend to call it, you know, <laughs> erotic material. Yeah. They tend to call it, you know, juicy jugs or whatever. <laughs> but <laughs> more than that, I don't understand how a video is gonna be any use to a blind person either. I know that you can hear the sound, yeah. Carl. Look <laughs> yeah. at him nodding like yeah. he's caught me out. Yeah, what sound will you hear? Do 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 Your meter mm. needs looking at? Yes. Cut. What's then? What's that? Then it's just- Noises, occasional it? groans. Yeah, right. You okay. could listen through the wall at your neighbours. <laughs> he does. <laughs> I mean, that's why I save a lot of money. <laughs> but I thought you were going to point out, Carl, that they could have had a braille porno. I hadn't yeah. thought of that. Look, feel, feel the lumps on that. <laughs> exactly. Think about it, Carl. Can think about it. You're excited now. Yeah. Yeah. Your girlfriend's away, Carl! Yeah, the cheese grate is only under the cupboard! <laughs> <laughs> now she's a good looking lady. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, go on. That time, innit? Yeah. Play go the on. jingle. Yeah. White van man, <laughs> Carl. <laughs> Brilliant. Recorded at great expense, that jingle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is where we just, uh, hijack an idea from The Sun, which is, um, White Van Man, where The Sun asks, um, in this instance, a cabbie by the look of it. Oh no, um, a fruit and veg shop owner. Ours is, ours is, uh, ours is slightly different, because The Sun sort of like, um, uh, pick on a perfectly normal member of the public. Exactly. So that's where we've got the- yeah. <laughs> the upper hand. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, they ask him about the, uh, you know, the hot potatoes. Uh, um, this week, Carl, my first question to you, well, your, just your thoughts, please, on the criticism of the BBC over their coverage of the Queen Mum's death. What do you make of this? You're aware of all the criticism that Peter Sisson's Not asked some probing what, questions? It, uh, no, I thought it was- wore a burgundy tie. I thought, that's it, yeah, he just had a- it didn't show respect, he just had a burgundy tie on. See that? That's not really not showing respect, is it? No, it's not. You know, you show your respect by sort of doing the news on it, giving her a, a, a bit of coverage, <laughs> and showing, you know, what a, a, publicity. What, what a good woman she was or whatever. Yeah. And then you move on to sport news or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. 
Uh, I totally agree. I, I don't like the way everything's morbid. I was thinking about it. Um, it's like, um, you know, the way in birthday cards and that, people always put funny things in them. I think you should save things like that for funerals, for like, funeral cards and that. And, and try and cheer people up at times when they're low. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Because on your birthday you're quite happy anyway, so you don't need a, someone putting a funny comment in a card. I think, you know, when you send what, what, a card- What would you, what would you suggest? Well, you know, uh um, Whoopee cushion, but on the vicar's chair, what, what, how would you like it up with just, just little, little things in the card, I mean, you're just writing stuff like, well, you know, at least you're still alive, or whatever. So as you're giving the eulogy- So, oh, that'd be good. So when, so suppose you know, someone's husband's killed in a car crash, you go around with some flowers and a little card and it says, at least you're still alive. Well, maybe something funnier than that. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe, like, if you got up to give the eulogy during a, a funeral, just wear a pair of comedy tits. Yeah. Or those glasses that are eyes on sort of yeah. springs. But why have, why has everyone got to be so sad about I someone agree. dying? No, what I annoys mean. me is that when you see the people on television, they sort of, members of the public, and they're crying about the Queen Mother, who was sad when anyone dies, sad when anyone nan, nan dies. She was 102. And, um, what, you know, I mean, it's sort of like, I think they think they should cry. Well, I, there's I, a picture in the paper I today. I don't understand it. There's a picture in the paper today of, uh, various people who were lining the pre, you know, the, uh, the funeral. Uh, kind of route yeah. yesterday, and there's a picture of a, a very young child, maybe sort of five or six, on the arms of her dad, and her head bowed, and it says a, a, a young girl there weeps for the Queen Mother. And I was looking at it, and she, you can tell she's just tired. Well, she's she just tired that, and bored. It's so cry? transparent that it's not crying. It's Most just people what are don't we cry doing? When their nan dies, exactly. You know, it's sort of like. Uh, but what is a five-year-old girl going to be? Why is she going to be crying? The Queen Mum said, oh, "I can't believe it." <laughs> yeah. Tell <Tully> Tubbies, no. <laughs> the Queen Mum. <laughs> Oh, not the tweenies. No, it's all in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> oh, oh dear. I mean, I, I know, I'm sure, you know, I don't know much about her, I don't know if she was a great woman, and obviously, you know, it's always sad when someone dies, but it's like, it's interesting that there was a lot of tourists in that long line of people mm. that are now queuing for hours upon hours to see her yeah. dying in state, because it's clearly just people who want to be a part must of history. Must be gutting if you're over from Sweden and you find out that, you know, the Queen Mum's died. Oh, I mean, you must be devastated. You probably don't want to carry on with your visit. <laughs> exactly. Really. Okay, listen, Carl, um... I think we've covered that. What do you yeah. make of the, uh, <laughs> What do you make of the first genetically modified baby? Oh. Are you worried about this? Do you know what did they do? What? Let me see what it says here. It well, says, isn't it uh, just choosing, uh, ju choosing the you know eye colour? Well, this or, is the, or this is the this is the concern, isn't it? That in the future you'll be able to decide uh, whether it's a boy or a girl, what how intelligent it is, what it looks like, is it handsome, is it ugly? Obviously, no one will choose an ugly baby, and so on and so on and so on. And so it means that you know where will it lead? Where will it end, Carl? Are you concerned? I've thought about this a lot. Cause what will us three look like in the future? If listen. they're being, you know, genetically modified beautiful people, what will be we be like? How will we be considered in That's society? True, yeah. But we've talked about this before, haven't we? About, uh, the cloning thing. Yeah. That's a bit weird. Yeah. But, um, I don't think it matters because at the end of the day, right, you might look like some other kid, but it's the way you've brought, that you brought up that will change your features and the way you are, you know, your personality. If you lie, you get a long nose, don't you? Well, no, but listen, right, because I remember when, when we, you know, I was growing up on this estate. This is gonna be good. Go on. No. No, it's not. It's just a, an example of how this doesn't work. Go on. So, so we don't need to worry sort of thing. Sure. Right? Okay. So, I'm growing up on this estate and there was a, there was this woman about four houses down, right, who's a bit rough. <laughs> all right? Didn't fancy her. Oh, God, no. Right? <laughs> but she had a Why? baby. Well, tell me about her first. I'm interested in this woman. Why was she? It was a very. So, like, being a man in a dress. I mean, I didn't grow up in a posh house or anything. And I'm sure. Not, I'm not saying that if you live in a bit of a rough house, mm. you're a bad person. What did she look like? But anyone can Tattoos? clean up. Tattoos? Look like they, Tony Green with a fag on. They didn't clean up much, right? Oh. Which, even if you've not got a lot of money, you can still try well, and make it look nice. Yeah. Right? But she didn't. And a kid used to take a horse into the house. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> whoa, 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 oh, whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, 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 Neddy, whoa, 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 What do you mean a kid used to take a horse into the house? When they get it, a right? horse? Must have nicked it from somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> must have gone. Is using horse in it? <laughs> no. <laughs> what, is that from outside the saloon round the corner? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was it just tied up with a bit of leather? <laughs> Right? Um, oh, that's great. I Big, Big Jake, I'm <laughs> looking <laughs> for it. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> so, <laughs> right, so, so let me get this. This was before the lynching stopped or after. <laughs> 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 Where did he get a um, horse from? What do you mean he must have nicked it? He's going to say, where'd you get that from? I bought it. All right then. But <laughs> keep it out of the kitchen. I don't want you going Catelyn rustling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where did he get a horse from, Carl? Just, and how long did he have it for? Was he leading it or riding it? 
Mum, open the door! I can't stop! <laughs> I can't stop it! Open the patio door as well, Obby! Looks like we got us a runaway! <laughs> what do you mean? I don't know, but the oh. thing is, they couldn't afford to buy one because they're not cheap. So I'm just guessing. Maybe that's wrong of me. But I, I think- He you know, had a horse? Yeah, right, so- That's I, why the family didn't have any money, they'd spend it on the horse. No, I exactly. don't think- That's what I'm saying, I don't think they would have bought it. So anyway- Yeah, it's so wise to whisper, Carl, in case they're listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and They could not, be in the room next door. It's not door. buying it, it's keeping it as well. Oh, but, so I, so I was like in the car with my dad, coming yeah. into the avenue, and you used to have to drive down it to turn round. And, yeah. Uh, and you know, sort of go back to uh, to our house. You had the traditional method of transport, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, the horse was in the lounge. <laughs> Reading a paper. Just, just like walking around. <laughs> oh God! This, what? And when I, when I was doing, I, I tried to earn myself some money once by flogging little flowers in, in plastic cups. What? This right. is genius. <laughs> it just keeps coming. What do you mean you're trying to flog little flowers? Well, well hang on, on. I just want to recap slightly. So there was a family and who had the horse in the family? It was- Cause you lived on a, an estate in Manchester. The, so the, the yeah. mother, the mother was a right- Pig, apparently. Well, I don't know if that's relevant. You don't need to go that far. But, but, you, but well, what I'm on. trying to do is, like, make a picture for you so you understand. What does she look like? Who did she look like? Um, bit of a, I know this respect to her, <laughs> bit like Pauline Quirk. <laughs> Quirky, yeah. <laughs> Right. Okay. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. I knew it was going to be poorly. Did she have any tats? Did she have any tats? I never got that close to it. Okay. All right. So and so, who had the horse? Was this her son or her no, husband? No, her, her daughter. Her daughter had stolen a horse. Yeah, from I don't know where. There was a, I think it was some stables down the road or something. And they they kept the horse in the house with. Them. They kept it in the house. Did but they, they get didn't caught? have it for long? No. So and you said you were in the house one day and you saw the no, horse. No. In what there. happened was I was. Um, they did this thing at school about raising money for charity, right? for some local charity, and they said you can do anything to, to raise money, and they came out with all these ideas and I thought, that's good. What was the charity? But forget, well, I don't know, I thought, forget the charity. Yeah, that's I'm just a, a good way of making over so, <laughs> You're a charity. So, um, <laughs> so I asked me ma'am for some, uh, cause she used to have a lot of flowers around the house. Sure. I said, can I just take some snippings off them? And, uh, I'll go and buy some plastic cups, and, uh, got some soil out of the garden, planted the, the, the bits of plants in them. Yeah. Got a tray. Yeah. Had about 25 plants on it, selling yeah. them for 25 pence each. Excellent. Did you sell any? Yeah, so loads. Did, they, did you just cut- you didn't just cut them and stick them in yeah, the soil? Yeah, they want to survive. Oh. But I think people sort of thought, well, good on him for trying. But anyway, so I went round to theirs, because I thought their house could do with a bit of colour and stuff. Yeah. Because it's a bit rough. So, as I went- The horse went, thank God for that <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> so they've, been, they've been feeding me kitty cat. <laughs> so I got up to the door, and they opened the door, and it was one of them houses where no carpet, <laughs> yeah. A horse in the living room. <laughs> you know. We've all been there. And, yeah. and the horse was walking around the living room. Oh. I looked quite happy and everything because I always say that about animals. Black Beauty right? was on. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Well, think about it, right? If you were a horse, where would you rather be? In a little wooden hut with a load of hay or in like a house with a central you know, heating? Three piece suite and sure. a telly and that. <laughs> telly and that! <laughs> no, but I was saying this the other day. <laughs> and an Atari. Right? <laughs> I was walking through London. Can't wait 64. Yeah. Rubbish. Exactly. W walking through London with Suzanne, right? Yeah. And do you know how like homeless people always have dogs? And yeah. she said, oh, I hope, I hope she looks after it. And I said, they've got- that dog is happier than most dogs. Right. Because people always walk past and give it a pat on the head. Yeah. It's with its owner all the time. Yeah. yeah. It's out in the open, it's not locked up in a house. Yeah. It doesn't you know eat, I mean? but other than that- <laughs> No, it does eat though, they're always alright. So that's what I was saying, I think this horse- was- was doing alright for yeah. itself. Do you know that, what I mean? Well, not many horses have got their own house. Exactly. For a mean? start, yeah. But anyway, that's- that's- wha That's what by the by. Yeah, yeah, so anyway, this family, who's a bit- what we were talking about, it was about cloning- Genetically modified kids yeah. and all that yeah. stuff, yeah. Right, now what I'm saying is, you could say, you know, right Steve, you could have a baby, right? Mm -hmm. And Ricky could see it and say, God, I want one that looks like that. Yeah. <laughs> right? It could happen, Rick. <laughs> So- Come on, work with him. So you take it to the doctors, <laughs> and I don't know what they do, they, they inject it with something or whatever. Yep, that's how yeah. it's done. Yeah. And uh, get a little baby, and there it is, it looks the same. Now the thing is, you separate, you both go off and do your own things. Yep. Right? Yeah. Now, you look at Ste Stephen, this is, you look after your baby. Yeah. You treat it well, you give it good food and I'm that. I'm a good dad. All the vitamins and stuff. Mm. Yeah. Ricky just gives it cheese. <laughs> right? So then it changes its looks, it goes a bit fat. You know, it gets tired easily, and that sort of thing. <laughs> now, when this family- Why am I just feeding a baby cheese? Right? This, this, um, this, this, this family had a horse in the, in, you know, in, the, in their house. Yeah. They had a, a little baby. And my mum went round and said, 
you're not gonna believe this, but it's a beautiful looking baby, right? Yeah. And I was like, well, you know. And, uh, the weird thing is, it was a good looking kid, but as time went on, they didn't really look after it. And I'm not saying, like, abusing it, but it used to run around, it used to play out till, like, ten at night. Yeah. Uh, it used to chase cars. <laughs> right. It was a bit- <laughs> Did it have hooves? <laughs> yeah, no. No. <laughs> Chase cars! Right? What sort of kid chases cars? <laughs> oh, God! No. Was it called Rover? The Did it catch sticks? It's Liam, it was called, right? Right. Now, the weird thing is, it was a good looking kid, but as time went on, and all that, like, not eating properly and its hair was all patchy. <laughs> it's not Liam Gallagher, is it? <laughs> <laughs> and chasing cars on that, and it became an ugly kid. It's definitely uh, Liam Gallagher. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, uh, that's what I'm saying, right? You can uh, clone, you can clone all you like, but at the end of the day, it's yeah. how you brought up. Brilliant. Wow! Wow! <laughs> life. Wow! That was a hell of a point. Oh God! Ooh. But am I right? Uh, you're always right, Carl. Finally, white van man. What do you make of the fact that Sainsbury's are bringing in square tins? <laughs> <laughs> Is, Is that, that true? a concern for you? <laughs> Is that true? Apparently so. Why? It's like it's easier to stack. Oh, this is what the guy in the uh, sun has said. That should be interesting. <laughs> 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 that should be. <laughs> <laughs> His comment on <laughs> Sainsbury's are bringing in square tins <laughs> is no. <laughs> is that should be interesting for meatballs. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky's just oh. collapsed on the floor. Let's just play a song, Carl. I don't think even you can top that. Now, Carl, you read a, a quote book. What did you learn from it? What, what, to, to some pearls of wisdom. Just get, keep it down to one or two, your favourite things and why you like them. Right, well, you said, like you said, you said just pick a couple. Yeah. Right? So I wrote a couple down yeah. last night. And what, what I did, so they, so they weren't boring, right? I've sort of- Don't think uh, you can ever be boring, no, but No, 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 but what I've done, I've, I've took like different ones, so I've took a, a good one, that I think, yeah, that, that's a good quote, that was worth putting in a book. <laughs> I've put one that isn't really a quote, so I don't understand it. Oh, one, yeah. One that isn't clever. <laughs> and, um, and a funny one. So a bit of variation all Perfect, out, of, yeah. out of one book. Oh, how long did this take you? What did you do? Did you sort of like sit? About half an hour last night. And did you sit sort of like quietly at a desk or well, something? N uh, no, just in the lounge with the telly turned down. Oh, right. Just to give a bit of light to the room. Just sure. had it on but turned down. Have you figured out lights yet? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so the first one, never heard of him, uh, this guy called Dean Axon. Right. And this is a good one. He said, the memo is written not to inform the reader but to protect the writer. That's good, yeah. yeah. Stuff, that's very good. That's yeah, it, that's... Yeah. So it relates a lot to, you know, office life and so on. Yeah, modern world and that. Mm -hmm. Right, so then, I thought, yeah, right, so I wrote that down because I liked it, and that's yeah. what you said to do. Second one, isn't really a quote, it's more of a, a poem. Okay. So how does that work? Well, that's okay. Just read it, just read it. Right, well, I want, it's about suicide. Okay. Right. Razors pain ya, rivers are damp, acids stain ya, drugs cause cramp. Gun guns aren't lawful, nooses give, Gas smells awful, so you might as well live. Lovely. That, is that that's from uh, Dorothy uh, Parker. That, I tell you it what. Is, yeah. It. I hate it. I hate that. Why? I just it's, uh, it's nothing to me that. I think and that. What? What? It's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. just a weak, right? shallow All piece right. of well, mock is, comedy. This is, this is why I did it in that order because that's what I thought. It's sort of like it's sort of like a it's like a zany vicar would write from living in Froome when he's right. about 55 and get it published in the- it, I hate it. Alright, so you're saying you're not a fan of Dorothy Parker's work, right? Right. Now the next one, Oscar Wilde. Yeah. Right, he's known, isn't he? Yes. Look, look what he comes up with. <laughs> All art is quite useless. Well that's- what, what's up with that? Well it isn't, I did art. No, I know, but it's- go on next. But how did- how has art helped you? <laughs> how has it been useful to you? It was a bit of a- it's- it's one of the only things I like doing at school. Right. Do you know what I mean? When I made that little clay man, getting it- fixing a car. Yeah. You, know, you made a clay man fixing a car, I'd forgotten about that. How- how can he- I, I think that's stupid. And especially that it's gone in a book. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Okay. It's easy to- to diss things. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's hard to- you're right. Exactly right. Uh, I, don't, I don't think art is useless, by the way. But then you don't have to agree or disagree with some of these things. Some of them are, you know, such that someone, some, sometimes it's just their thoughts put eloquently or poetically, isn't it? And it's just, you Just know, to provoke a reaction as much yeah, as anything. Yeah, yeah. Mm, well. And the good one, Ozzy Osbourne. I mean, the, <laughs> ir 
Sorry, but let's go back there. The irony is that that is art. That he 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 was an artist, wasn't he? So, but you you okay? So you don't like Oscar Wilde, but you <laughs> prefer Ozzy Osbourne. <laughs> so yeah, go on. Ozzy Osbourne, crack him on this. Funny and educational. <laughs> I bit a head off a bat the other night. It was like eating a crunchy wrapped in a chamois leather. <laughs> Genius. <laughs> 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 oh, oh you're right. You're right, Carl. Yeah. So, there's- What do you like about that? The way he's described what it is like- I think, yeah, if someone- I mean, that, you can imagine what it's like. Cause I like crunchies. Yeah. And, it's like and, a simmer, yeah. and a chamois leather's really chewy, so you, you can imagine that's like the skin. So you like his- you, you like his descriptive yeah, writing? the crunchy bit is like the bones and that. Yeah. So perfect. But you know, Carl, it's interesting because you've analysed Ozzy there, and in a way, that is the first step on maybe doing a new English GCSE. Yeah, you, know, you, being you able said, to study said language what you liked it. And you said because it describes what about you've never eaten about yourself. Yeah, but my teacher, Mrs. Kane, if I would have come into school with, uh, you know, a quote by Ozzy Osbourne, she wouldn't have been happy. Sure. Really? Do you know what I mean? And that's the difference. She'd go opinion. right, Carl, get your horse and go home. <laughs> well, listen, though, we were talking about other quotes. <laughs> yeah. Um, Neil Armstrong. Yeah. Do you know his one? Yeah. What one? Giant leap for mankind. Do you know it wasn't meant to be that? You know it's, it says, um, it's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, right? Yep. It was meant to be, this is one small step for a man. Right. I.e. Yes. me, the individual, uh, on a microcosmic level, one giant leap for mankind. And he mucked it up, because if you say, this is one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, it, man there means mankind. I know, I know, I know, it's embarrassing. So he, so he, oh, see, so you shouldn't give people, he's not a trained actor. <laughs> That's true He's enough. more of an astronaut, to be Has honest. Has he won any awards, uh, Rick? No, there are no awards. Is he BAFTA nominated? Don't think so. <laughs> but listen, right, he said another quote, as he, um, as he got back into the rocket. Have you heard about it? Go on. We run out of time, and I'm just wondering whether it's worth saving as a bit of a teaser for next week. <laughs> <laughs> what did Neil Armstrong say as he got back into the rocket? Yeah, is it going to be something like uh, that? Was boring, wasn't it? <laughs> the mic's not still on, is it? Yeah, they're not still listening. Well, that's what I was saying to you. He could have said that, and it would have still not gone down. Geez. It would have still <laughs> gone down as an amazing. <laughs> next week, by the way, you've got happiness quotations—a collection of thoughtful words and beautiful paintings. I'll just give you an example of one. Happiness is a perfume you can pour on others without. You cannot pour on others without getting a few drops on yourself. It's lovely, that isn't it? Brilliant. Well, that's it. We've run out of time. We have indeed. So no, no time for um, Carl's quote. That'll have to come next week. Yeah, we'll save that for next time. Strong. Um, well, I hope you uh, enjoyed it. Goodbye. <laughs> All right, Rick. Come on, I'm sounding a bit chirpier. It's not that depressing.